Welcome to this video tutorial where I'll be aiming to teach you how to put a video file from your camcorder onto a Blu-ray disc with possible menus. The program I am using, I highly suggest, is a Vegas Movie Studio HD Platinum 11 and a other program which I'm using, it's DVD Architect uh, Studio 5. And uh, these two programs separately actually cost more to buy them separately than to buy them in a a physical box called the Sony Imagination Studios 3, version 3. And uh, I got that for $15 on Amazon, and it is currently 25 I believe, at the time of recording. And I'll put a link to that in the description box. <coughs> well, let's, let's get into the basics of this program. Now first, we'll need uh, media files, which I have an assortment of things here. Here's our video file. 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second. If you want to put this onto a Blu-ray, you can't do. The maximum you can do is 25 frames per second on 1080p. And 720p, you can do 60 frames per second. But uh, you cannot do 60 frames per second on 1080p. So let's drag this into Vegas. You can drag it up here or directly into here. Do this. You can see all the, the codec information and stuff here. You can drag it into here, here, here. I suggest avoiding the top layer because we'll use that for a watermark later. Okay, now use a scroll on your mouse to scroll in. And basic thing, you want to use the split, which is S on keyboard. It took 20 minutes to find that when I first got the program. So maybe that'll save you some time. And click in then on the object and delete key, and it's gone. Or right-click delete. The next is how to put transitions, which you can just delete and delete, and then uh, just remove and move this over but uh, if you have more than one like that let's go back split here no and push and delete instead of split All right so you have that that's that moves separately so you want to have them together and hold control or if you have more than two hold shift and click the last one and then it'll all move at once you can do that We'll go back to our original full recording. We'll just split it there and put a transition in. Put a transitions tab. There are a lot to choose from here. And uh, the one I usually use is Flash, Hard Flash, and there's also another one I use sometimes use, which is a uh, the sprite light sort of shuffles them. Flash, Hard Flash, just drag it right between them. If there's more than one split in the area, I want to zoom in. And then dra drag it in there. You can change the hue of the light. I don't just keep it keep it white. That's what I usually do. And if you want the audio to transition in with that as well, you can extend how long you want to go to, like uh, extend it a little bit, and then go to this fade on set of the audio. The bottom is audio, top is video. So we'll zoom in and move over a little bit. Move the audio and snap it right here, and that's. Let's just watch the transition. It's sort of odd how the audio is, but let's watch it. Just a recording of me zooming into my backyard to do a very dirty window that hasn't been cleaned in a long time. So uh, the next part I guess you want to know how to do is uh, a watermark. Just basic things here. Got media generators, legacy text. And let's drag text over here to the first one. It has to be on the very top one, or else it will not show over all layers. Or you can get fancy and do it different layers. Let's try 18. And go to placement. You can drag it around randomly, uh, freely if you want. Or go to save some and click none. Because these boxes, are, I guess, were for older televisions at the time. Because this is an older program, I believe from, I guess, 2003 or around there somewhere. And then uh, I use bottom left. Uh, I guess I'll use bottom right for this video. Or bottom right. Okay. I guess we can change it to one one level. And uh, let's just change it to uh, test. And drag this to be your whole project long if you want to and click the very top hold and drag it down and go with lowest opacity if you want 
we're going to keep it at 50. And if you want to make it to a Blu-ray, you can with this uh, make movie option in here. Okay, burn it to a DVD or Blu-ray disc here. If you select Blu-ray Blu disc with menus, you, it won't let you do it because it'll shuffle or uh, move the files over to DVD Arctic Studio, which I'll be talking about in a minute. But you can use Blu-ray disc and it'll just burn just this one video. You put the Blu-ray in, it will start playing automatically with nothing else. So that's why I choose to use menus. Because you can put other things in, like different menus for, like if, I rec if you record a uh, an event for somebody and there's a pamphlet, you can scan it and put the pictures on into a menu. You can see the pictures, make a slideshow or manual slideshow. Add music, audio, a different audio, anything you want with menus. So. You'd be sacrificing a lot if you just use Pluridisc. That's why I suggest getting both of these programs. So, uh, with the rendering for the program, the other program, you have to use render the audio and video separately. So, first we'll do the video. And cheat and only show my favorites here. I'm not going to do that for this, for everyone's sake here. Sony AVC. And go to the Blu-ray section. You want to use this one. Ignore the 50i and 60i. You're not going to be able to get uh, 60 frames per second on a uh, regular Blu a 1080p Blu-ray. It's not possible with the current format that Blu-rays are in. You can do 720p for uh, 60 frames per second, but you can do maximum of 25 interlaced on a 1080p. Let's select change the template here. If you have Anything where it's not grayed out with include audio, you're not doing something wrong. If it's grayed out, it's good. You're doing something right. You can change the frame right here. Everything above 24000 is all uh, inter interlaced. It says progressive scan here. Go to PAL25 is upper field first. That's interlaced. You don't want that. You go left and right with your video, you'll see flickering effects, just like on old DVDs, which uh, every DVD is actually interlaced even now today because uh, it has to work backwards with every DVD player. You can't go higher than the uh, maximum drop down. You, if you want to enter, you can enter it manually. You have to put commas in too. Enter it higher than that and click OK. It'll go back to the highest. So we're going to keep it at default here. 16,000 uh, kilobits. I sort of, sometimes that's misleading. Kilobits, kilobytes. But uh, I guess everything looks right. And let's, you can change the name, but uh, keep the, the uh, extension there. And make sure you put both of these in the same directory. Render. Video rendering takes a long time if you're ever, if you've ever used video editing programs before. Especially in high quality, and if you make the Blu-ray disc later, a very, very long time to compile that. Let's do the audio now. You can use Dolby Digital, but uh, I cannot find a way to get that above 192 kilobits per second. So let's go to P PCM, which is the Sony Wave 64, 48,000 hertz, or 48 kilohertz. And uh, you can do, there's 24, there's a way to do it to 24 on different format like this that's compatible, but I, I can't find it. So let's go with what I got. You, this program does allow you to mix your own 5.1 six channels but I have not learned how to do that I expect it's a, a steep learning curve just like the whole all both these programs are so we'll go ahead and do that make sure it's in the same spot for uh, the next program to be able to capture everything correctly same name exactly but th different extensions it's okay uh, if you don't have extensions visible in Windows you can uh, I suggest you search how to do that and uh, fit audio is very fast to encode because I guess just because it's, un it's uncompressed with PCM. And let's move over to DVD Architect Studio. I'll move my files over and we'll have a uh, transition right here. We're now in DVD Architect Studio 5. It's the lowest version that supports Blu ray support, to my knowledge. And let's drag our file in first. Let's uh, select the video file first, which will probably be AVC if you follow in the tutorial. Drag the video in, and it'll drag the audio in there automatically. 
this yellow box is how it's selected if you're on the menu. You can change that the highlight here. I usually use uh, this right here, the mask overlay. Change the color and stuff. You can do all sorts of stuff with all these menus. Change the text here. Let's go to play. You can add more videos like this. And you can even change the background and navigation, where, where everything goes. Add buttons. You can change it from the, the thumbnail from being still to being animated. And double click to enter here. And we can select and make scenes for our scene selection menu. It's the next part. So we'll start, we'll start playing here, and I'll be clicking this up here. Well, you can pause it and go in between frames if you need to, to make scenes, scenes directly where you want them. But I'll be, I won't be doing that for sake of time. So here we go, playing here. Like there for a second. Okay, so that's uh, four scenes. The first one being uh, the start. So uh, click on the orange. Like well, I guess that's the first one. I don't know. Rename marker. Let's name it uh, chapter two. Now let's go back to the main menu. Right click your main video that you, that you want to make a scene selection menu out of, and and select insert scene selection menu. And since we made four, I guess we make four. Try to keep an even number. If you go above, uh, ab above the links per page that you have made, or uh, I think it's never mind, it's, it's under links per page you have made. They'll split them and make it do a different page. So I guess we can select four, keep it even, and they'll insert that. And you can put together snaps. You can move it right with the keys. I guess we can make the button style text only. I'll say scene selection looks good. Navigate N2. Couldn't figure out how to click on that one, but can with enough practice. And the highlight, change the text or mask overlay, and then animated. Already animated. All right. You can change the name of them here if you want to, like uh, grass. There's tall grass. And uh. That's good. You can even change where the navigation goes to, like uh, up goes to five, which is uh, the menu one, which is this down here. You can even change. Let's just for the me the benefit when you're after you have this made on the your TV is what those would do. You can change. Actually, you spent a lot of time doing that one time. This one time it took me three hours to have twenty scene selection points and to program the where everything goes correctly because there's a lot of buttons. And uh, let's go back to the main menu. I guess we can put that under it. It's like both of these. Center and... I guess that's... need to put this in the middle. I guess it takes some... some customization here. Looks good. You can delete that if you want to. Just delete. And you can add another menu or insert sub menu. And then go in here and you do everything again if you want to. And it has this here to go up to the main menu or go up one menu. Or you can select where you want it to go. Action, destination, parent menu, or any other thing you've made, which is linked over here. The parent menu is just one up. A lot of thought going into this program if you give it a lot of time. And uh, once we're done, uh, you just want to go to Make Blu-ray Disc. I, pref I uh, suggest you use Prepare. And I prefer to use this. You don't have to. But, uh, make it an ISO where and with your destination. And uh, the thing about this is, it says it'll be compressed. It'll always say that. But uh, you have something out. It'll say that it's outside this, these safe menus right here. But uh, with with the new, I guess there's, there's old televisions, like I said before, and other, you can do that. You can still see it on YouTube or on the screen, modern televisions. But you get out here into the gray, you will not see that part off the screen. So, uh, make Blu-ray disc, prepare, 
and click finish. You can click op optimize if you're short on space because a 25 gigabyte media only has enough room for 22.5 gigabytes of real storage. That's how uh, it works, but uh, it's odd, but it works like that. And uh, click finish and it'll start encoding and something like this probably take a very short while, but the last one I made that was almost full 25 was uh, took about six hours to encode. And you can burn it with the built-in burning program or something like IMG burn or image burn or something like that. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And uh, see you on the Blu-rays, I guess.